Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload, as you can tell by the title of the slide, is when to expect your first frost this year. <clears throat> Ideally, I would have made this video a few weeks prior, since especially since uh, some locations are going to be seeing their frost in the next couple of days across the northeast. Okay, and uh, some locations already have seen their frost, so that's fine. It's not, you know, not many people have seen it yet, but, uh, you know, that's what today's video is on. And I have made this video for past, I think, 40 years. I don't know, three years, this is, it's fourth year, something like that. Okay, so, you know, I you know, consider, uh, because of that, I, I don't know, subscribing if you want to, uh, you know, keeping up with the tradition. I do this, as you could see, for a very long time, and I do this uh, similar type of stuff, like who will see the most snow, when to expect your first frost, you know, how will the winter be, and then I obviously do long, long range forecast and winter storm updates, and a possible hurricane update here and there so <clears throat> the factors are gonna be uh, sorry about that that should be sa saying average first <clears throat> frost mm, first frost map but I'm basically using the same slideshow as I did for a first snowfall map <clears throat> because I for the snowfall map I just basically talked about the cold and that's what you know the frost is also what I'm gonna be talking about for the frost video as well so that should be you know first frost then we have the ends of outlook and Noah's seasonal outlook <clears throat> as well okay <clears throat> Noah's seasonal outlook is uh, I take into lease account since it is usually you know not uh, not uh, up to date and then my fall temperature outlook which I created <clears throat> quite a quite a while ago so this is what our first a uh, frost uh, map looks like and this is what I based my final map off of okay, so you can see that okay, <clears throat> a good chunk of uh, the, you know parts a good chunk of the mountainous and uh, northwest and west is, has already seen it August 1st to 31st and <clears throat> it hasn't been that cold in those areas okay so maybe I mean, not everyone in these wet areas has seen it yet because it's been above average in those areas but, uh, you know, soon, September 1st to 30th, you could see is a huge swath across the Midwest, across the West and the Northeast. So that's definitely something to make a video about in the near future, which I'm doing today. <clears throat> because it's going to happen very quickly and it's going to spread very quickly south. So this is what I based my final forecast off of. This is the sea surface temperatures, which leads us to talk about the Enzo Outlook, <clears throat> these are uh, as of August 30th, 2019, which is today, and you can see that okay, <clears throat> there isn't not much warm water anymore. The blues have a little bit diminished, so it's it's still a neutral pattern. There was earlier thoughts of it possibly becoming a lani or something like that. Um, you know, the possibility is still there, but it seems as if a neutral pattern will take hold, and it seems that pattern will last <clears throat> for quite a while, and. It, I should uh, correct myself actually because uh, I mentioned that the neutral pattern should take hold. It's already taking hold. <laughs> it's already in effect for uh, since I think a couple of weeks already. So what you know, uh, <clears throat> this is basically what it means. You could or what the forecast is: August, September, October. You could still see a neutral dominating. As we get further into the winter time, you can see the chances diminish down to 50%. Then the El Nino starts competing with the El Nino is a possibility. So we'll have to see. But for the fall, <clears throat> it's definitely going to be neutral. And that's what we want to know for this first frost uh, you know, time frame that usually occurs in the fall time unless you live in the south. And then uh, you're, you, know, you get it in December or January. <clears throat> but uh, this is what, uh, you know, th it's important, uh, the fall period for this video. The fall period is what we're looking at. These are the the models that are showing what the probability uh, are is of a uh, neutral or a La Nina or an El Nino <clears throat> and what they're showing. And you can see mo uh, here, let me draw this out quickly. <clears throat> here is a qualification for a neutral down to here. So... You can see if I were to continue this, a good chunk of the of the forecast of the models are in between this. Some are showing a very weak El Nino, <clears throat> so that could uh, alter some of the effects. But at this point, um, you could see that uh, <clears throat> predicts in uh, predicts a neutral through northern hemisphere. The average of all the models, but the average of the statistical models predicts a weak El Nino. So we'll have to see what that does. I don't think there will be a weak El Nino, really, but, I mean, you could see that uh, it's a pretty good probability that there will be a neutral, and the El Nino 
may or may not, but I, it won't really affect the fall again. Uh, at this point, it seems most of the fall period will be neutral. <clears throat> so let's look at the, what the neutral winter pattern is. This is what it typically looks like. You see, you can see cold across the northeast and the north, wet and warm across the south. So that would delay the frost for the south, increase the time frame for the north. But this is the winter map. And, you know, we're looking at October, September as our time frame. So that's not really applicable. So basically what I did is <clears throat> I found, I compiled a bunch of neutral winters or, you know, neutral years, neutral falls. <clears throat> similar to this year and I you know and I did what August through November looks like and it's important that I did August through November because again some locations have already seen <clears throat> their uh, their frost or will in the next couple of days and you can see that it's uh, warmer across the west which it was like I mentioned earlier is what's going on right now across the west the mountains are being warm <clears throat> there's uh, you know there's a few areas that are seeing frost at this point and then the east is chilly, so, you know, if a cool air mass comes through, this could definitely uh, speed up the first frost. If you typically, you know, in northern, extreme northern Minnesota, see it around September 10th, you may see it in the next couple of days, in September, you know, 5th or something, or 1st even. These these uh, chilly blasts of air already starting to make their way down, <clears throat> and it's definitely starting to speed up some of that first frost. Uh, dates for many and you can see that the temperature outlook for NOAA this is the seasonal outlook again you can see not consistent with the rest of the video not consistent with the data but this has not been updated <clears throat> since I think uh, this was made 18th of July but I'm pretty sure the one that looks uh, that is right now looks very similar uh, just warm for the nine I mean a hundred percent of the countries are saying will be above average which obviously isn't true so that's just no at, at its finest and you can see also uh, the precipitation and probability for the three month outlook is uh that, that one I, I you know i may buy more than this one but they're showing above average for the southwest south central plains <clears throat> and up into just their plains so this is my fall <clears throat> outlook uh, for temperatures and i also want to factor that into the video just to give you an idea what i think you know the temp you know what the anomalies will be for the fall and you can see I did below average temperatures for uh, mo most of the Midwest and uh, Upper Plains. And it's extending down into extreme western parts of the Northeast. Uh, and uh, extreme e extreme western, yeah. That was a little weird. And uh, you can see also in this bluer line that is <clears throat> slightly below average. Or basically just I have lesser confidence in the area being below average. But still I have think, you know, they will be below average just i don't know to what extent here <clears throat> i you know how i included the northwest in this average maybe a bit cooler now i would probably diminish this a blue and just relieve that in the whites maybe the orange you know i don't know the northwest at the beginning seemed like it would maybe getting some cooler air now it seems as if uh, they will be getting more warm especially with the ongoing pattern that is happening which i think we could see recurring through the winter and again that is the wet warm in the west and cool in the east but uh, in the south, definitely, and I would ex include now the northeast in this light blue or even this blue. So that's, you know, that, that's a major factor, this, this map into our first frost as it speeds up several days. <clears throat> so here's the map. Uh, hopefully you could, you know, figure out. I, I apologize about uh, these states up here. <clears throat> you can, like North Dakota, South Dakota, you can't see their outlines really because I made this uh, the opacity of this color a little bit too thick. And uh, and so I'll try to fix that, or you know, try making striving for better maps in the future. But basically, the upper plains, um, the <clears throat> the Midwest uh, parts of the Midwest, northern Midwest and northeast. I just expanded their September first through thirtieth time frame all the way down into northern Iowa. Usually, the September first through thirtieth stops at around <clears throat> stops at around right here. Uh, somewhere like that. I just expanded it because I think it will be chillier and cooler and I basically kept it the same for the west. I don't think it will get speed, you know, sped up. I actually decreased it in several areas. Um, by the way, these white colors, yeah, that is that is where it has already occurred or will occur in literally like, you know, a couple of days. In this uh, lighter purple, uh, 
or dark lighter purple darker pink you could see I uh, made the October 1st to 15th usually that stops at around uh, northern Kansas uh, or extreme northern Kansas the border with Nebraska northern Missouri and central Illinois but I brought it down into central Illinois mid Missouri and southern Kansas and the reason for that is uh, again I think it will be a little bit sped up along with the northeast I increased it for Boston New York City and many other areas I think the end of the growing season will come pretty early this year and for the uh <clears throat> for the west i basically maintained it and uh i you know i made it the same or less because of those warmer temperatures they won't really get spe sped up as much as it does in the east you can see in a darker blue that is 15 through the 30th <clears throat> and that is uh, again a little bit more aggressive than what it typically is but that again i think it will be sooner as for the reasons I explained earlier also the Northwest is in the 15th through 30th like the like Seattle Portland and all those uh, major cities up there and I apologize if this you know if you live somewhere in California live in some of these mountains right here because I know there's a mountain range right here and uh, you, you see uh, your first frost in October and I, I just have it under possible well you know I couldn't really pinpoint every uh, mountain range every peak and that will be tough so basically if you see your, if you see frost, uh, you know, like heavy, heavy frost in the fall, then you probably still will see frost. But, you know, if you're in one of those areas like San Francisco where you may usually not, you probably won't this year. And that is because it's going to be fairly warm along with the southern part of Texas and Florida. It's possible. Um, most likely not. And then it is light blue, first through the 15th of November, again, more aggressive. Also have parts of Utah and Nevada and California. And then 15th through the 30th, basically bringing it down to the Gulf Coast. And this time we're first through 30th in that red, again, um, probably will see frost, but uh, it's still a little bit of a gamble. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode. See ya.